Okay, guys, I wanted to take a moment and walk you through a couple things that I've come to um, realize on progressive loading in respects to the Dillon Super 1050 or RL 1050 or even the RL um, 1100, which is the new one. Um, and this is just a quick overview video of how I set my tool head up versus the way my tool head used to be set up and just some um, just some insight on why. So what you have here sitting in front of me and excuse the lighting, um, I'm just kind of out on my reloading bench and as I get uh, move forward into doing more of these, I'll probably get some better lighting and um, sound quality and stuff like that. But just for my first video or first reloading type video, I, um, I'm just gonna kind of wing it with an iPhone recording and stuff like that. So apologize if it's not super stable and the audio is not very clear as well as the lighting. With that said, um, stock Dylan tool head, um, Dylan dies. And guys, I've been a Dylan, you know, blue Kool-Aid drinker for forever. I mean, I, I learned on a Dylan 650. I progressed up to a 1050 and I hated it. I moved back to a 650, I moved down to a 550 back to a 650, eventually up to three 1050s. And um, really for me, the biggest thing on the 1050 was just being intimidated by the press without really understanding how the press worked. So for anybody who's getting into a 1050, um, first and foremost, read the booklet that Dylan sends with the press. Um, I think we're all very eager to just jump into loading and pr pulling a handle or, or hitting start on an automation machine and letting, you know, letting it do its thing without fully understanding how to tweak and adjust it. So that's first and foremost, but, um, let's just jump into this tool head. This is the stock Dylan tool head that comes on the press. And this specific tool head here is, um, set up for 45 ACP. And the way this was set up was a Dylan carbide sizer and decapper in station one, Dylan's flare die for 45 ACP in station two. You can see station three is not a station at all. It's just a open spot that sits above the priming station. You have the powder dropper with a funnel in it, which, um, you know, in a traditional non-1050 machine, that powder funnel was used to bell your case and drop powder. Um, in the 1050, if you're using a flare die um, from Dylan or other, you can actually set the funnel to simply actuate the bar and drop powder, which makes a huge difference once you understand um, why you're doing that. Station four, is typically a, a powder check or a Mr. Bullet feeder die, so you can just uh, keep cranking away. Station five is your seating die, and station six is your crimp die. And um, we're gonna take a look at why I changed those dies out, or all these dies out, and, and what I went to. Um, and excuse all the background stuff, don't pay much attention to kind of what's floating around on the bench as far as other presses. But currently, um, and I removed my uh, my tube here just so we can see, but currently the way my tool has set up is, this is a CNC shooter tool head. Um, I like this a lot for many reasons and I can kind of get into that in just a minute. But um, what you'll see here now is this station over here, station three, which isn't a station in, with a stock Dillon tool head, um, is just, it's not used. It's not used for anything. So what I have here is uh, Wayne's, I'm sorry, here is Wayne's Mighty Armory TNT size die with his uh, decap flicker spring system. Here I have Mighty Armory's flare die, which is adjustable here. Um, I really am enjoying that die a lot. I think it does a great job flaring perfectly after si being sized perfectly. Um, a hold down die for priming, and that just gives you a lot more consistency in terms of your power, uh, your primer seat. Um, I am running this, you know, the stock Dylan powder drop. However, I have. Unique Tech's micrometer on there for fine tuned adjusting powder, which this is this is a great addition um, in my opinion. 
Um, typically there would be a bullet feeder there. I just took it off. Um, I was sw swapping things over. Um, it's actually sitting on another press right now. Um, but typically the bullet feeder die goes there. This is Mighty Armory's universal seating die. And this, this die outside of the, you know, the Reading competition seating die is it's just been really, really nice and a lot easier to adjust and, um, a lot less headaches versus what I was getting with the standard Dylan seat die. Once you lock that nut down, guys, you know, uh, typically what I would do is I would just put a 45 ACP factory round in there, screw that die down until it touches the top of the head, crank the lock ring down, and then based off of um, this here, I can fine tune my bullet seating depth um, is, is higher, as down as I want with some very, very fine tuning um, and adjustments. And then finally, I have my um, Redding uh, crimp die. This die setup is, in my opinion, as close to as good as it gets. Um, you know, you, you got people who love the, the full Redding competition, um, you know, gambit of dies for, for their progressive press. But this, this for me, um, although expensive, was well worth the money. And I'll show you some of the um, differences and consistency of ammo that I was pressing out. Before I do that, I wanna give CNC Shooter uh, a shout out for this advanced tool head. The reason that this tool head is really, really solid and um, what I've kind of outfitted all my presses to, um, you know, now is um, one, the extra station above the priming uh, station. It, it's really nice to be able to get very, very consistent um, primer depth and and just stabilizing this, stabilize this whole machine. The other reason um, that I'm loving this is this alignment pin right here. It's adjustable up and down. You can see how far that comes down, guys. So the moment that right now that I'm now into the press, into the shell plate, nothing's moving, everything's aligned, and it just stabilizes this press out um, a lot, much more than just the Dylan Stock um, tool head. You have a much more heavy duty um, camming piece right here, which is also adjustable, um, up or down. And then um, lastly, the way the primer depth um, adjustment is on this tool head versus the stock Dylan is it's a, a lot better. Um, it's, it's just a lot nicer and I'm not going to get into it because I don't have the proper lighting and the tool heads full of, of dies. So in another video, if I ever approach, um, or I ever decide to do a, re a full review on this tool head, um, you you guys will be able to see that. And if you, if you'd like to see that, um, go ahead and leave a little note in the comment. And as a side note, don't kill me too bad for having some of the nomenclature terms incorrect in terms of, you know, the, the technicalities of reloading. Um, it just is what it is for me. I don't really, I don't care all that much about it. Um, but let me walk you back over here now and show you, um, show you something that I found to be very interesting. So these, these rounds here, um, this was loaded on my Dylan tool head and you can see that bottlenecking um, pretty clearly where the where the bullet comes into the case um, and it's 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 kind of out of whack and the top of this bullet is almost looks squeezed it's it's really strange looking um, not a big deal ultimately or realistically it's not the end of the world um, let me find another one just to show you that that clear bottlenecking having a hard time because I don't have a ton of great light in this, in this garage right now. Here you can you can see that ridge right here where the bullet's seated down and you, you essentially have two different sizes uh, or two different size sizes when it comes to the case. You can see it really really nicely there. Um, but that that just over that just impacts the the overall um, 
consistency of the bullet, the concentricity of the case, um, and you know, for people who who say details matter, um, this is something that will drive someone crazy. Um, the reason this happens is because the Dillon size die um, over here is is sizing at a much a, a lot undersized, right? It's not as drastic as the the Lee U die for like the nine millimeter stuff, but it, it's still you can still see that. Um, and I want consistency in terms of accuracy, pressures, and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's just what I, what it is. This bullet that I'm showing you guys is a 230 grain XTP um, Hornaday bullet, and uh, you know it's the exact same as what I loaded here using those Mighty Armory dies. And I just want to show you this piece of ammo. So um, right away from the head, um, it's not it's not caved in at all um it, that that die that universal seating die does a great job you also notice just a perfectly sized case with the bullet being perfectly seated and the crimp being proper um you know for me when i'm shooting 45 out of a uh you know, out of a, an eight or nine thousand dollar nineteen eleven, I really want my rounds as perfectly um, made as is possible. And from what I am seeing um, in my initial, you know, couple hundred rounds, I'm getting it with these dies specifically, and I'm really liking the additional spot for the tool head um, hold down as well as this alignment pin. So for me, huge difference, liking it a lot. Um, and I can't really say enough about both of the, both of the companies. Um, and you know, for, for Wayne, he's kind of gone above and beyond, you know, just phone tech support, having a conversation with them. What do I need? What do you recommend? And uh, stuff like that. And, and then, and then lastly, you know, he's like, hey, if you if you need me to help you set these up as far as adjusting depths and all that stuff, um, feel free to call. Like I said, I was I, I I was so impressed by that. I went ahead and I essentially have the same exact thing set up um, for nine millimeter. The only difference being instead of the universal seating die, I have a Reading competition die. And the reason that I have that over the universal seating die is simply because I've had this die for a really long time. Um, and I didn't think there was any need to replace it with another seating die that I could tweak out. Um, but I do have the same setup that's going here on this one, and that'll be in 38 Super Comp. And as you can kind of see, um, I have the die sitting there as well as the Redding 38 Super um, crimp and micrometer die. So anyways, hope this was helpful. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of insight on, um, what I was using in the past versus what I'm using now. Um, kind of the, the results of loading off this tool head, which is the stock Dillon tool head that I have with 45 ACP Dillon, um, dies in it. And then the mighty armory dies and just kind of the difference in the quality of ammo that was being produced or pressed out. Um, this isn't a super technical video or how to adjust and set dies or any of that stuff, but I did think it would be um, cool to make this one really quickly and then lastly show you the end results of what was being produced. So um, looking forward to some comments, guys. Uh, I'll chat with you all soon. Have a great evening.